high is working the graveyard shift when he comes face to face with a 500 pound black bear. I was on my way to go change the outside trash and I was walking towards the our automatic door and it opened. And then I seen him try to come in, so I stepped towards him and then he comes into the store, kind of lunges at me. And though working in this area has given Paul plenty of bear handling experience, this time is different. I usually have to run him off at least once or twice a night out of the parking lot, never out of the store though. I was just trying to get him out. That way he didn't, you know, trash the whole place. And this bear's behavior is making that much easier said than done. As soon as the bear lunged at me, my whole train of thought changed and I was just like, yeah, you can have whatever you want, man. Just, just take it and go. Fortunately, there's one item in particular that looks a little tastier than Paul. He actually grabs a bag of Snickers and leaves. But the bag of candy bars isn't the bear's only score. On another night, that was the other graveyard guy, his name is Dave. Apparently that night, the bear laid down on the floor and ate a whole box of Three Musketeers. But even after the sweet feast, Paul's co-worker has a much more difficult time getting the bear out of the store and calls for help. When authorities arrive, the bear finally acquiesces. But not before grabbing one more snack for the road. The spontaneous visit stopped after the California Department of Fish and Wildlife captured the bear and release him somewhere far away, making it one less troublesome, cranky customer for Paul and his co-workers to bear with. It was not in the job description to get bears out of the store when I was hired. That was part of the deal. Tensions and entitlement are rising at a convenience store in Sterling, Virginia, as a man begins recording a customer who he claims has been complaining about the checkout line moving too slowly. Oh, you're in a hurry. Oh, yeah. The woman to her right has stepped aside to let her go first. Are you going to line No, she was way ahead of you. Okay, well, she should be in line and go her turn. She was before you. Okay, she should go. I think she's being polite. At this point, Everyone seems a little perturbed. And as the impatient customer attempts to purchase some alcohol, it only gets worse. Ma'am, I need your ID. Yeah, I won't put my phone number. I just need your ID. I can put my phone number. Everybody gets ID and mine my gets scanned number. every time I'm here. ID is required to buy alcohol at this store, regardless of one's age. There's nothing in here for you to bring out. I have American Express as partner. I bet that's it. You have no product in there because you've given me no ID. But the woman remains unconvinced. Do you want to give me an ID? You know what, give me a manager. manager. I am the manager. She is the manager. I don't believe it. I'm here every day. I have to show my ID every day. Just show it. Who the hell are you? I'm not Karen. Okay, here's the deal, or I will call the police, okay? You need I to leave. My... This is going to do you no good. That's a very valid card. Ma'am, there's you no put in your purse then. Because you won't give me your ID. Finally, she relents. OK, I'll give you my ID. Right here. Here you go. That's all we had to do. Here you go. All we had to do. But the testy back and forths continue. Now you can put your platinum. Yes, platinum. Thank you. Cool. It's a platinum. We're all in front of you. You don't know anything about it. You look very rich. You do. I, yes, I'm rich. You, you, you I look am. good. I am rich. I like your stuff. Yeah, You're done. thank you. Your nappy hair. She finishes up her much longer than necessary transaction with one final caustic sign off. I don't even thing. tell you bye. Oh. <laughs> Proof positive that even a platinum card's worth of entitlement buys not even a moment of patience. I forget what I even came in for. Hello, how are you? All right, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. In Anaheim, California, a delivery woman and a homeowner follow social distancing protocols as she drops off his food. 
Thank you. Uh huh. Have a nice day. All right, you too. Okay, let's go. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye, sweetie. As the driver retrieves her hot bag, she notices something the homeowner has left for her. An array of snacks and a note of appreciation. And it's not just on this day. The homeowners, who get their fair share of deliveries, leave the goods out every day. Thank you. At a time when delivery people are in high demand. Thank you and at times overworked, the kind gesture is welcomed and appreciated. Thank you. And the offering isn't only for delivery people. It's for anyone providing a service. And the lucky driver who makes multiple deliveries to this address. Thank you. Gets to be a repeat customer himself. And never once does he forget to express his own gratitude for the gratitude. Thank you. A man in a British Columbia superstore is filming an alleged shoplifter trying to leave the store with a cart full of merchandise. You gonna pay for that? Huh? You gonna pay for that? Yeah. Where? Huh? You gonna pay for it? He's dismissing the man filming but there's someone else he's going to have to face, and she means business. The woman, who claims to have seen the man shoving roast beefs into his backpack earlier, rips the man's mask off. Come on, bud. While the man filming grabs the car full of goods. Come on. Get out thus thwarting the alleged would-be thief. Just jack up the price for everybody else because of you It's about time they got caught. Though he does get away with his backpack. Come on. He is later identified and arrested for theft. Shake your and go. The woman who confronted the shoplifter was 73-year-old former bank teller Elaine Galloway who was once reportedly held at gunpoint while at work. Get out! So shoplifters, if you're thinking of stealing anywhere near Elaine, ah. think again. In Charlotte, North Carolina, the man at this drive through window has a problem with his order. I need my money back and I want it fast. A big problem. The double hamburger. Is there cheese in hamburger? There's no cheese in hamburger. When you have a cheeseburger, you have a cheeseburger. If you have hamburger, you have hamburger. But the presence of cheese is not the only problem with his order. There's not even bacon on this, and not onion on this, and not anything that I asked for. This is such incompetence. I cannot believe it. It happens every time I come here. I want my money back. But the enraged customer's biggest beef? I'm losing my because this happened the past three times I've come. Please be confident. Once in your life. Once. Take an order and fill it. And to top it off, when he finally receives his refund, I paid more than this. I want 10 bucks. You sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. Someone please give this poor man a hamburger. The double hamburger. That's hamburger. Hold the cheese. There's no cheese in hamburger. Being a barber usually means cutting all kinds of customers' hair in all kinds of styles and sometimes dealing with some less than enthusiastic reactions. But few as extreme as what barbershop owner Robbie Pasitti recently experienced and shared on social media. So this 17-year-old kid comes to the barbershop for the first time. I'm like, hey, bub, what do you want? He's like, I want a high and tight. I'm like, oh, all right, let's get it. I go, what, what do you want on top? He's like, a number two. I literally stop and I'm like, bro, a number two's real short. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I'm like, are you sure? It's real short, yep, yep, just do it. I said, okay, grab the number two, bang. This kid literally said nothing the entire haircut, nothing. 
he tips me. I'm like, hey, bro, have a good one, dude. Have a, have a good school year. Do good at basketball, all that. 20 minutes later, his mom comes busting in the door. Oh, it's too short. It's too short. I'm like, hun, your, your son asked for a number two. No, no, no. It's too short. It's too short. I'm, I'm going to sue you. I'll see you in court. And she calls 911. Look at this lady wasting my day. Wait for a bad right for there. a bad haircut. Yeah, for a bad haircut that yeah, I one, one. that I gave her that I gave her son that he asked for. I was shocked. Literally deep down I what, what was going through my mind too. I was like, is this a joke? Look laugh? at her. Wasting my day. Look at this whack job. And then when it really hit me, I was like, wow. And I was like, I, I gotta I have to film this. Can you tell him to get away from yeah. my face? No, I won't. No, I won't. I Look at her. Well. Look at her. Well. Calling the police over something so small. Something bad could have happened to someone, and they needed those resources to get help. Look at her. <laughs> and I just thought it was out of control. Five minutes later, the police do show up. I explained to them everything that happened. They were literally speechless. Like, there was not much words being said. I never asked what she was saying. They never told me really what she was saying. They just wanted my side, and I guess they got her side. No charges are filed, but this experience has changed the way Robbie handles his business. Now, I ask a few more questions. You know, um, I'm a little hesitant. Like, if a kid comes in by himself, I'll just make sure. I ask now mostly everybody if they can provide a picture of what they want. I didn't switch up my style. I, I kind of switched on my approach. Look at it. Look at her. <laughs> I'm in the middle of making the purchase, ma'am. Unbelievable. I want to pay for my and then I'll have your job, Lynn. At a Louisiana discount store, a customer is furious at a cashier who, according to the man filming, was on her cell phone video chatting with a male friend. I'm glad you and your friends think something like that is so funny. The customer is enraged because she claims she heard a lewd comment about her body, allegedly said by the cashier's friend during the chat. Bitch, you don't need to back. Your friend is still on speakerphone laughing at me. The cashier, who is apparently still on the call with her friend, wisely seems to disconnect. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye. But it's too little, too late. You are a and so is your little small. Yeah, okay. Well, he's a dude. Like you are a bitch. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Ma'am, I need the number to talk to someone besides her. No word on whether the offended customer spoke to anyone else about the alleged incident. And then I'll have your job, Lynn. But here's hoping both of their days. You are a and so is your little small Got much, much better after that. I want to pay for my and then I'll have your job, Lynn. A customer in line at a Utah drive through records a dispute over an order between an employee and several men in the car ahead. <laughs> Come outside, oh. Come outside. Yeah, I'm yeah. Good. What's up? 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 The group of men attempt to escalate the beef by goading the employee into the parking lot to hash it out. When the driver gets out of the car, he is holding a gun. They got the gun. The gun wielder's friend intercepts him. Hey, 
Run, pull that at Get back in the But it's not enough. Okay, okay. Get back in the car. Okay, okay, okay. Guys, seriously? Oh my god. The aggressor's friend steps in again. But still, the man seems unwilling to let it go. I don't need this. I'll Until finally, they get back into their car and leave the scene. Did you get that? Hi, I got the all on video. Police are given a copy of the video. No word on any charges. Everybody watching this lady on the phone. She accused me of stealing her son's phone. This woman believes the man filming her stole her son's cell phone while they were shopping at a superstore in Moreno Valley, California. She started looking at me, and I know I'm black with tattoos, so she automatically assumes I had it. She says, location says it's me. She runs up to me and says, excuse me, you have my son's phone? The woman claims that a phone locator app led her to the area around the man's car while the man claims she followed him out of the store. What will happen when you're wrong? What happens? What do I get, just an apology? Sure. That's not good enough. No, we're staying here until you give me my phone, because it I marks don't. that you're here. I don't have a phone. No. Ma'am, you're nope. really crazy. You're following yep. me now. Now I am. That's good. Because that, that phone a has A sorry is not good yes. enough. A sorry, no. a sorry person isn't no, good enough for me. Now a I sorry am accusing you. Feeling unsafe in the parking lot, the man decides to head back to the store. I'm definitely pressing charges. The registry profile. When they walk through the door, an employee is waiting there with the woman's family, and both the accuser and the accused jump right into it. How you doing, ma'am? Call the police department. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. He accused me of stealing a phone, ma'am. I have it, her accusing me on video. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be when her. When we were in the parking lot, it was marking him like right there, What's but happening? I can't. Suddenly, a break in the case. It should follow us, right? If I have the phone, right, it should follow us in the store. The woman spots her son walking back into the store with the missing phone, exonerating the accused man. Her son found the phone. Her son found it in the car. Excuse me, do you have my son's phone? So now I'm going to press charges. Ma'am, may I have your name, please? May I have your name, please, ma'am? No. No? Okay, that's okay. I'll get your license plate. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. The woman mutters a curse at the man rather than make amends. No. Okay, that's okay. I'll get your license plate. Leaving the store employee to offer the apology. Sorry about that. After his video is widely seen, the wrongly accused man gets contacted by a discrimination attorney. Whether he plans on suing the boy's mom is yet to be decided. What will happen when you're wrong? What do I get, just an apology? Sure. Oh. 